the Prince George County's John Doe, 1973. An unidentified male was discovered on the 6th of December, 1973, in a wooded area in Upper Marlboro, Prince George's County, Maryland. The area is located on the old Crane Highway near Pennsylvania Avenue. His cause of death could not be determined, although he had passed away only hours before being found. And despite being only 15 to 20 years old, they felt it was a natural death. They believe it was possibly pneumonia. He wasn't tall, being only 5 feet or so and weighing around 100 pounds. He had brown hair and brown eyes. His face had stubble and the form of a slight mustache. He was wearing a blue and gray cotton jacket that had the initials ELT on the collar. He had white corduroy trousers that had the word Shalom crudely written on the left leg. It is believed that John Doe may have been hospitalized in the days prior to his death. The Maryland State Police, as well as the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, are hoping for tips about his identity. It's that number that's provided on the screen. The Prince George's County John Doe has gone unidentified for 48 years. The Fort Indian Town Gap Jane Doe 1973 also known as Lebanon County Jane Doe, 1973. Two Lebanon County deputy game wardens were out patrolling State Route 443 near Jonestown, Pennsylvania, when they found what was suspected to be a poached animal that had begun to decay, perhaps a deer. This was a common issue in the area, so they were entirely unprepared to find the remains of a human being about 200 yards from the road. She was unclothed and it had been rendered unidentifiable by scavenging animals. She was found covered in green plastic with a white seal that said, National Sanitation Foundation Testing Laboratory 8505. The strangest part is that they found out later this laboratory doesn't even exist. An autopsy concluded she'd been there around three weeks and her cause of death could not be determined. However, because there were no clothes found anywhere near her, it was concluded that the death was most likely that of a homicide. It was determined she was a white female, possibly of Southeast European descent, likely between 16 and 20 years old, around 5 foot 5 to 5 foot 8, and her hair was long and light, possibly a light brown or even a strawberry blonde. She had a thin nose that swayed slightly to the left, and a lip that tilted slightly to the right. She had a huge amount of dental work that had been performed on her, so she was likely not a homeless person unless she was a recent runaway. Isotope testing determined she was likely born in the southeastern United States, including Springfield or southern Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Tennessee, West Virginia, Florida, Georgia or North Carolina. A more specific list can be found on the screen. You can contact the Jonestown Police, the Lebanon Coroner, or Crime Stoppers if you have any information at all on this case. The Ford Indian Town Gap Jane Doe has gone unidentified for more than 48 years. The Guadalupe County Jane Doe, 1978. The Guadalupe County Jane Doe was a female who died by gunshot on July 11, 1978. She was a victim of the serial duo Ronald Lamphere and Diane Geisinger. But while those who took her life have been punished, her name has continued to elude those in charge of the case. It is believed that she was picked up in Perry, Oklahoma on July 11, and that she told her killers it was her 17th birthday on that day. She mentioned needing to call her mother saying it was something she always did on her birthday. Sadly, she would never have that chance. If this fact was true, it means her date of birth was July 11, 1961. Jane had blonde hair, blue eyes, and three earring holes in her left ear. She had two piercings in the right. She could be anywhere from 17 to 25 years old and was 5 foot 8, 145 pounds. Even if she misled them on her age, it's possible that July 11th is still her date of birth. She was wearing dark brown moccasins, cut off shorts. Her vest was navy blue and it was the halter style. She was carrying a guitar, a coin purse, and her birth certificate according to her killers. 
Sadly, the birth certificate was destroyed by those who took her life. This shouldn't have even happened. The killing duo shouldn't have been together. Geisinger was seven months pregnant when her boyfriend, Lamphere, escaped from prison in South Dakota in July of 1978. The two planned to get married in Las Vegas, though it's not clear if this ever happened. To fund this trip, they robbed a gas station, but it wasn't enough to just take money. They chose to also take the life of the attendant that was working there. In return, they got just a small amount of money. They then picked up our Jane Doe that same night near a hotel in Perry, Oklahoma. Our Doe was hitchhiking, saying that she was on her way to visit her mother. She bragged about the amount of money she'd spent on the guitar she was carrying with her. It's hard to know if theft is the reason they did what they did, or they just did it because they liked doing it. Either way, sadly, her fate was sealed. The three of them eventually stopped at a coffee shop and a bar, and the victim said she wanted to call her mother, so they let her out of the car. As she exited the vehicle, Lamphere shot her twice in the back of the head. They then rolled her body off a cliff and stole her belongings. The heartless duo did reach Las Vegas. They arrived on July 13, 1978. And after a night of gambling, they continued on to San Bernardino, California, where they took another life, Robert Unger. Their car broke down, and Robert Unger was kind enough to pick them up. Their trip of terror was thankfully ended shortly after this, and Lamphere was sentenced to death. His girlfriend, Diana Geisinger, was the star witness. Lamphere would flip-flop about Geisinger. At one point, he said she had no idea what was going to happen, and that she only stayed with them out of fear. Later on, however, he blamed it all on her, developing a huge story about how Diana had done it all, on her own, and he didn't even find out until weeks later what she had done. I will never show postmortem photos on this channel. However, they may help in identification and I don't want to leave that out. So in this case, there is a photo of her face available online. Information should be called in to the Chief Medical Examiner of New Mexico. The Guadalupe County Jane Doe has gone unidentified for 43 years. The Mobile County John Doe, 1999. Sadly, this has the least information of any John Doe I've ever covered, although they recently offered this sketch. A group of fishermen discovered skeletal remains on September 14, 1999, on a beach in Dauphin Island in Alabama. He was estimated to be between 20 and 40 years old at the time, and he stood between 5 foot 1 and 5 foot 7. They were able to note that he still had a baby tooth intact, as well as a wisdom tooth that had been extracted recently. When he was first found, they believed he was younger, probably because he was short in stature. Newer technology suggests he might have been older than this. That is why there is such a wide age range between 20 and 40 years old. Authorities believe he either fell off a boat or was in a helicopter crash. The Mobile County John Doe has gone unidentified for 22 years. That's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. Take care of yourselves and each other.